Thank you so much, Dr. Goldman. It's a, uh, a real honor and pleasure to be here and to share some of my ideas with you. The, uh, the previous speakers all have been very iconoclastic in their approach to medical problems in their own relative specialties. What I intend to do this morning is to discuss my own clinical experience and observations having operated on several hundred patients with malignant brain tumors and share with you some of my conclusions and also provide the scientific basis for a radical new approach, perhaps somewhat like Dr. Morgenthaler did relative to prostatic cancer, to the treatment of malignant brain tumors. And this is based on the metabolic control of the tumor and also the evolutionarily conserved capacity of normal cells to withstand extremes in physiological microenvironments as contrasted with malignant cells. The various authors, that I, although I'm presenting this paper, the individuals that you see on this slide are all experts in their field that have contributed actually more than I in many respects to what I'm going to show you. As a neurosurgeon, when a patient comes into my office complaining of intractable headaches, maybe a speech disturbance, maybe a little weakness on one side of the body, the most terrifying thing that one can see when you pull up the MRI scan and look at it is the lesion that you see there in the brain because you know that very shortly thereafter, within three to six months, if no treatment is given, the patient will not survive. With the very best of therapy, we may get 12 to 18 months of survival. We know that when a patient sits there in front of you in the office, that no matter what we do at this time, the treatment is palliative and not curative. We know that steroid surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation therapy are going to be the agents of choice, but we also know that there have been no major advances in the treatment of this disease in the last 10,000 years, much less the last 50 years. With all of the billions of dollars added to scientific research, in the last 40 years, we have added six months to the survival rate in patients with malignant brain tumors. Six months. There's a huge effort going on looking at the various targets of cell division, transcription factors, the cellular cell's response to stimuli, and there are a host of small molecules monoclonal antibodies, cancer vaccines, and gene therapy that are being investigated in all the centers across the United States and the world. One of my professors at Oxford University in England many years ago had a penchant in dealing with patients when he said, when everything's going right, change nothing. If nothing's going right, Maybe we should change everything. What I'm going to suggest for you today is a new, radical, controversial approach to the treatment of malignant brain tumors and maybe other tumors based on the metabolic aspects of malignancies and brain tumors. I have new in quotation marks because it's going to be based on what Hippocrates had chiseled into the marble of the temple of Aesculapius on the island of Kos 2400 years ago when he said, let food be your medicine and medicine be your food. Let's go back even several million years to our evolution from Australopithecus to Homo sapiens and how that evolutionary development occurred. It was entirely dependent on 
our body's adaptability and versatility under extremes of environmental stress. Nietzsche said it best. He said, that which does not kill me makes me stronger. And in our evolutionary development, what has happened is our cellular response to the environment has enabled us to live longer because of our adaptability. So we know that we have evolved in an extremely hostile environment. It's just as hostile now as, as some of the things on stress that Dr. Sinatra alluded to, uh, our emotional environment and stressful environment. But physical environment, we lived in a period for millions of years based on feast or famine. In times of plenty, we consumed all of the calories that we possibly could, stored them up into our adipose tissue for times of famine. This is the same principle encoded in our genetic code. Why 60% of the people in the United States now are obese or overweight because of this same evolutionary biological principle. Well, what happens when there is indeed a famine? when we're stressed, when there's calorie restriction. Well, our bodies convert the adipose tissue, the triglycerides, into free fatty acids that are metabolized by the liver and converted to ketone bodies. Ketone bodies are a fuel in lieu of carbohydrates or sugar, which our brain, our heart, our liver, our kidneys have learned to utilize in the absence of carbohydrates.